Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to another module of Convex Optimization course. Uh, in this module, we will review some examples related to QP, QC, QP, and SOCP. Let's look at the first problem. That is robust quadratic program. So we formulate QP as that we minimize a quadratic function subject to a fine inequality constraint and a fine equality constraints. The problem under consideration is that we have uncertainties in P or P is subject to errors. The, this can be modeled as that P belongs to some set Y. To incorporate these uncertainties in P, we formulate a robust quadratic program, robust QP, in which we minimize again a quadratic function but we take a supremum over a set y. So p, we take a supremum of p over the set y and subject to the same constraints. The question under consideration is that for a given y, say y is a set of finite number of matrices. Uh, in fact, uh, a set of finite number of positive semi-definite matrices since we require p to be positive semi-definite. For given y, we want to formulate tractable optimization problem. So by tractable here, we mean that we want to formulate this robust QP as either LP, QP, QC, QP, or SOCP. Okay. So since y is a set of finite number of matrices, so we can reformulate this robust QB problem by changing supremum to maximum in which the function is we take a maximum over this set i is equal from i is equal to 1 to k subject to uh, the same constraints. Using epigraph reformulation, I can rewrite this problem as that we minimize t subject to objective function less than or equal to t. So this maximum can be removed from here and we can have k number of such constraints from for i is equal to 1 to k and then we have ax less than equal to b and gx is equal to h of fine constraints. So if you see this problem here we are minimizing a linear function subject to quadratic inequality constraints a fine inequality constraints and a fine equality constraints. So we know that we know that this is QCQP. So we can say that a robust quadratic program can be formulated as a quadratically constrained quadratic program. Let's look at uh, one more problem that uh, we want to minimize sum of norms. So here uh, we're minimizing sum of norms. So we have gi x plus hi, we take Euclidean norm for each i, uh, and we sum for from i is equal to one to p. Optimization variable here is in x. Here gi is a matrix uh, that can have a different dimension. So each gi belongs to r k i cross n. So again, using epigraph reformulation. Now I can rewrite this problem as that we minimize uh, sum of ti and i is equal to 1 to p such that gi x plus hi including norm is less than or equal to ti. So here the variable in the first problem the variable optimization was x but when we converted this into alternative problem using epigraph reformulation. So now the variable optimization is x and t. So, so we can say that initially the dimension of the problem was uh, n, but now optimization of variable belongs to r n plus p because t belongs to r p. So if we, if we see this, we're minimizing a linear function subject to 
second order constraint and therefore this problem is SOCP. We can also learn how to convert this second order constraint into a standard form. So what we studied earlier that we express a second order constraint in this form that we have ax plus b greater norm less than or equal to c transpose x plus t. So the question here, how can we express this gi x plus hi squared less than or equal to ti in this standard form? So if we carry out very simple, if we if we define x tilde as xt variable of interest that belongs to our n plus b and we say take b is equal to hi and we also define a matrix A such that A is equal to gi and, and then we have p number of col zero columns here. Right. So when you multiply A with x tilde that is equivalent to if you multiply gi with x and we take we also define c that c is a vector that contains all zeros except for one entry that is equal to one and this entry is in fact n plus ith entry and this entry ensures that when you multiply c with x tilde you get ti and uh, so we have related A with GI, C uh, such that C transpose X tilde is TI, so B is equal to HI and uh, we take D is equal to 0. So that's, so with, with these definitions we can express GI X plus HI including norm less than or equal to TI in standard form which is AX plus B including norm less than or equal to C transpose X plus T. Okay, uh, so now we move to uh, another example in which we minimize maximum of the norms. So we formulate this problem as that we minimize uh, maximum of the norms. So again, we have uh, k number of norms and we take maximum over the k number of norms and uh, we want to minimize the maximum of uh, these k norms. So this is again very similar to the previous problem using epigraph reformulation. So we can redefine this problem as that we minimize t subject to objective function less than or equal to t. Again we can convert, we can remove this maximum from here and we can have k number of such constraints. Okay. So again if you see this problem you minimize a linear function subject to second order constraint. So this is also SOCP. So both the problems maximum of norms and minimization of the sum of norms can be casted as SOCP. Let's look at one more example in which uh, we, we first start uh, with the formulation of hyperbolic constraint as second order constraints and later we will use this uh, to look at the problem in which we maximize harmonic mean. So what is a hyperbolic constraint? So hyperbolic constraint is defined as uh, w square less than equal to yz where we just take a scalar case first in which so w is a scalar in R uh, and yz are non-negative scalars. So, so w belongs to R and yz belongs to R plus and this constraint is, is referred to as hyperbolic constraint. So there is a well known relationship which, which we can exploit to convert this hyperbolic constraint into a second order constraint. 
So this hyperbolic constraint is equivalent to this second order constraint. In order to show the equivalence between hyperbolic constraint and second order constraint, we, ex we square the second order constraint since y is positive and z is positive. So we can square this and this won't change anything. So if we square this and expand uh, the norm, we get 2w squared plus y minus z whole square less than or equal to y plus z whole square. And if we move this y minus z to the right hand side, we get 4w squared less than or equal to y plus z whole square minus y minus z whole square. And if you carry out simplification, what you get is 4w squared less than or equal to 4yz. And um, all this we can say w squared less than yz. This is in fact a hyperbolic constraint. So that's how we can establish an equivalence between a hyperbolic constraint and a second order constraint. We can also look at the vector case. In vector case, uh, we have w, we take w as vector and we take y z as scalars. So w belongs to R n and y z belongs to R plus. So w squared is replaced with w transpose w. So we have this hyperbolic constraint. Again, uh, we can have the we can we can represent this hyperbolic constraint as an equivalent second order constraint. So 2w y minus z gradient norm less than or equal to y plus z. Okay, let's look at uh, one application of this relationship between hyperbolic constraint and second order constraint. So we look at one example in which we maximize harmonic mean. So we have an optimization problem in which we maximize harmonic mean. So okay why do we call this harmonic mean uh, what we know that harmonic mean is given by if you have vector x that belongs to rn so its harmonic mean is given by uh, n over 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2 plus uh, so on and 1 over xn right this is known as harmonic mean and if we pre-compose this definition of harmonic mean with with a fine function so what we get is is this and we only require that each of these term in the denominator ai transpose x minus bi is positive and so and we can incorporate this in the constraint that we maximize this harmonic mean subject to ax greater than or equal to b so this ensures that the denominator ai transpose x minus bi is is positive for each i or in fact non-negative uh, for each i. So we want to maximize this harmonic mean. So this is equal in two if we minimize inverse of this. Since each quantity is a positive quantity, so maximizing harmonic mean is equal in two minimizing one over harmonic mean. So we minimize uh, sum of 1 over ai transpose x minus bi subject to the same constraints uh, again using hyper uh, using epigraph reformulation approach we can rewrite this problem as that we minimize sum of ti's and such that 1 over ai transpose x minus bi is less than or equal to ti and for i is equal to 1 to k and we also have these uh, inequality constraints ax greater than or equal to b okay if we look at each of these constraints uh, 1 over ai transpose x minus bi less than or equal to ti so if i move this uh, denominator to the right hand side 1 less less than or equal to ti times ai transpose x minus bi if you look at this constraint closely, this is in fact a hyperbolic constraint. So on left hand side we have 1, on right hand side we have two scalars Ti and Ai transpose x minus Bi. So if you compare with this with hyperbolic constraint, so W is 1, Y is Ti 
and z is ai transpose x minus bi so we can express this constraint as a second order constraint in this form we take w is equal to 1 so we have a 2 here so we have ai transpose x minus bi minus ti so y minus z and here we have on right hand side we have y plus z so this is a second order constraint or we can say that minimizing harmonic mean sorry maximizing harmonic mean can be casted as a second order constraint program socp we stop here and we will continue in the next module thank you very much